All right, today we're going to be changing motor mounts and coupler on a Series 100 pump. And these are some of the tools you'll need. A hammer, a ball peen hammer, or a standard finishing hammer would be fine. A good, healthy, thick, regular screwdriver. A medium-sized Phillips screwdriver. A 7 16 inch wrench in a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Today we're going to replace uh, a coupler and a set of motor mounts. And uh, the first thing we'll do is, here's your pump. You don't have to uh, deal with any service valves or anything like that because you're not going to disturb any seal kits or gaskets in the bearing assembly itself. Make sure you shut your power off to your motor and then you can start working on the pump. So the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the four motor mount bolts on the bearing assembly. Okay, now that we're loosening the last bolt that holds the motor in place, make sure you have a firm grip on the motor. And as you're going to see, the coupler is going to have to come off the bearing assembly before you can work on the motor or the coupler itself. So we'll take our Allen wrench and we'll go in through the side of the bearing assembly through one of these little holes right here. And we'll unscrew the Allen screw from the coupler half. and slide the coupler right off the bearing assembly. Then what we'll do is we'll take the coupler off the motor shaft and set it aside. If it's in one piece, don't throw it away. You can keep it as a spare for an emergency uh, problem if you have one. The new coupler that we have here, a new set of motor mounts, we'll get to that in a minute. Now to get to the motor mounts on the pump, you'll see the rubber rings here are on a little housing on the motor itself, so we have to take this carriage off. And that's held on by four Phillips screws, and we'll loosen them up and take the uh, the motor mounting Okay, bracket. now that we're taking the last of the screws out of the motor bracket, lift the top off, and your wire will come through the head of the motor here. Set it aside. Lift the motor out of the bottom one, and set it aside. Now what we'll do is we'll take the motor mounts off. And Jason, if you can get a close up on this one, I'm going to take a good heavy screwdriver and put it down behind the motor mount, but into the back side of the rubber. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive that screwdriver down through the rubber and into this middle metal ring to drive that motor mount off of the motor. Watch. All right, now we'll do the other side and the same thing applies to the other side. Back of the rubber, but down into the little metal disc. And off comes the motor mounts. These you can discard because they cannot be used again. Now we'll put the new motor mounts on, and they come two to a package. The special key about this is find your oil ports and take your new motor mounts. And if you look on the new motor mount, it has fat spots to go in the 6 and 12 o'clock positions on the motor. Those have to go up and down, so you line them up 
with your oil port. And if you look on the side of the motor mount, it's got a little spacer ring. That goes on top, like so, right here. So you put that on there and you just kind of press it on with your hand and get it into position. Take your hammer in a circular motion, tap the motor mount on until it's flush with the end of the motor And do the same on the other side. <clears throat> Being careful not to hit the shaft of the motor. Now the motor is ready to put back in its cradle, so we'll bring the cradle back in and we'll set the motor in its cradle, making sure that the grooves on the motor mounts go into the cradle like so. Center the motor, making sure your oil ports are pointing straight up. Now we'll take the top part of the bracket and put our wires back through it. You see there's two holes here. We'll go through the back one and out through the back. And then we'll lower the bracket on top. Now there's a little grounding wire back here on the back side on the, on the motor that has to go over the motor mount and then you set the top part of the bracket on top of it. Again, making sure that you line the top bracket into the groove of the motor mount and then we'll get it screwed down. All right, now that we've got the screws tightened on the motor bracket, What we're going to do is we're going to take our new coupler and I like to slide it on the bearing assembly first. It's easier just working with the coupler than with the coupler and the motor in this position. So again we'll slide it on the shaft and we'll line it up with the dimple in the shaft of the bearing assembly. Okay, screw the Allen screw into place and again, lightly tighten, don't over tighten it. Now what you want to do is you want to bring your motor into place, kind of cradle it in your arm. And now you want to put the coupler half on the motor side. And again, a nice snug little twist. And now we'll slide this into place. And we'll tighten down our bolts. And you're done. <laughs>